Hey, it's me, MLB. This is Chapter 2 of Pinpoint. This one is titled About You. Thank you. Have a lovely day. You called to the lady as she stepped out of your shop. She waved to you as she walked across the street and you smiled. Another happy customer? Your grandma asked. Yes, I think so. You replied with a small smile. Ah, you don't think very highly of your own skill, my dear. You need to be more confident, your grandma said with what looked like to be an enthusiastic fist pump. Like you, Grandma? You giggled. Yes, like me, she replied with a cheeky glint in her eye. Now that your father had passed away, it was just you and your Grandma. She had owned and run the local jewellery shop for over 50 years and was well known in the area. She hailed from a long line of jewel quirk wielders and was hoping that you, also holding the jewel quirk, would take over the business once she had passed away. You could create precious stones by singing. The style and pitch of the song would determine which gem would form and the volume would determine the size. This was all very well except that you were very shy so all of your stones were small. Despite their size they were indeed exquisite which was earning you quite the reputation for beautiful work and people were starting to acknowledge your skill. Your father had been able to manifest gems, jewels and precious stones just by talking. His delivery had been similar to yours in that his tone of voice dictated the type of stone and the volume had determined the size. Your grandma had the igneous activation. She could make gems, jewels and precious stones and rare rock formations from her hands. She would produce an insane amount of pressure and heat between her palms and thus be able to make any gem that she wished for. Her knowledge of stones and how they formed far exceeded the textbooks and she could get exact replicas of jewels over and over again. These days she only did the odd request here and there, as she was getting older now and could, couldn't keep up the heat and pressure that making precious gems required. If she did try to make a particularly complex stone but failed to keep the temperature up, it would turn out as pyrite, fool's gold, a useless gem. Her main expertise lay in moonstone, corundum and zircon, all very beautiful gems but made at lower temperatures. You smiled at her as she retreated to the back of the store to create another gem, sighing happily and stretching across the counter. Life was good. It was simple and peaceful. You were happy living with your grandma. You felt like you really didn't need a man in your life. A few suitors had come and tried their luck with you, but you very quickly and politely turned them all down. It wasn't that you didn't like men, it's just that you felt like you'd already met the one, your soulmate, a good 13 years ago at the marketplace in a town far away. Stupidly, you'd let him go without so much as asking his name. You could easily recall what he looked like though, you'd never forget it to be honest. His beautiful mismatched eyes and his white and red hair parted directly down the middle. You remembered that you'd formed him a Hessonite garnet before disappearing amongst the crowd. Did he still remember you? Did he still have the gem that you made for him? Or had he thrown it away? You shook your head to shake those thoughts away and busied yourself with cleaning and tidying the shop. If he really felt the same way about me, he'd come and find me. You decided to keep your resolve. If it's meant to be, then it will happen. He'll come and find me. From outside the shop, two men watched you. Are you sure she's the one? The man with the red tattoo on his neck asked. No, I'm not sure. That's why we've got to case it. The other taller man replied with a grunt. Let's just go in and ask a few questions. Then we'll go from there. The man with the red tattoo nodded and the two men walked across to your store. You looked up as the bell on the door jingled. Hello. You were about to give your usual quiet, warm welcome, but the look of these two men threw you off. They looked like trouble. Good morning, miss, the taller man said brightly. We're after some of your handiwork, he added with a crooked smile. What exactly were you after? You asked in a small voice, your eyes shifting from one man to the other and your gaze settling on the red tattoo on the second man's neck. Ah, uh, nothing in particular, the first man said loudly. Would you mind if we looked around a bit? Not at all, you replied, trying to hide the discomfort in your voice. Good, thanks love, he said with another suspiciously large grin. You forced a small smile and watched them as they looked in every cabinet, examining gems and stones that you had on display. Say, uh, you got any gold? Asked the man with the red tattoo on his neck, his question earning him a sharp smack on the back of the head from the taller bloke. Um, no, sorry, we don't make gold for displays. But you can make it, the red tattooed man persisted. Is it you that makes it? Sensing something was awry, you decided to answer the question as ambiguously as possible. 
We have a few jewelers here. We, we, we don't specify who makes stones for safety reasons, you stated, trying to sound as confident as possible. Thank you, miss. Please excuse my colleague's intrusive questions, the taller male cut in before the red tattooed man could say anything else. We've seen enough. Thank you for your time. And with that, he dragged his partner out the door and they both sauntered off down the road. You shuddered. They were a bit strange, you thought, glad that they had kept their visit brief. And there ends chapter two of Pinpoint. Stay tuned for chapter three.